okay, yeah, this seems like two opposing things that you can't do at the same time, but the actual fact is, yes, you can and you should. So you want your maneuvers to be aggressive, but you don't want to be using a bunch of strength to execute the maneuvers, right? You want to aggressively escape your opponent's position before your opponent gets settled, therefore you don't have to use strength you can use relax it. You can relax. You can you can be proactive. Same thing with defending a, a, a submission attempt. You want to sub- defend that submission attempt aggressively before the submission attempt gets settled in. You want to move aggressively. Again, I'm not talking about strength and spazzing. I'm talking about moving aggressively before your opponent moves and get ahead of them on their OODA loop. When you get ahead of them on their OODA loop, they're going to have issues with you. And so, yeah, absolutely. You can be default aggressive and at the same time you can be relaxed and you should. That should be your goal. Do you sometimes have to use strength in jiu-jitsu? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Sometimes you got to power out of something. Why did you? The reason you had to power out of something is because you were too late. Because you weren't (laughs) moving aggressively enough. You weren't moving quickly enough. And so then you got to power out of something. Got to claw those hands, claw that guillotine off your neck. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know when you get a guillotine on someone and they're clawing your fingers away from their neck? Yes. Yeah. So when that happens, that person was late. Yeah. And and now they're clawing. They're resorting to strength. They're resorting to panic, clawing yeah. at your fingers. Yeah. Sometimes it, do, it usually doesn't even matter. They can claw. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Good. No, I, <laughs> I like that. So that's what that's what it is. And by the way, this is true in life as well, right? Yeah. Like, if if you are maneuvering correctly, correctly as a leader, you don't have to get aggressive at people because they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Right? You don't have to be. You shouldn't have to yell. If you have to yell as a boss, guess what? You're. Your intent wasn't followed. Your plan wasn't understood. There's so many mistakes that you made if you're yelling as a leader. Mm. Do you never have to yell? Yeah, sure. Sometimes you can yell because you got to make sure you get that emotional point across. Sometimes you got to make sure that someone realize, like someone doesn't seem to realize that the mistake that they made is severe enough that that it warrants a yelling, and therefore it doesn't matter to them because their dad yelled at them their whole life. Well, so if you're not yelling, they don't get it. Mm-hmm. So can you can can you run into that ca- problem occasionally? Occasionally, mm-hmm. very occasionally, very very rarely should you run into that situation. Because if you're doing the right job, being default aggressive as a leader, you should be in situations where you never have to yell, because your people, because your people understand what it is that they're supposed to be doing. They understand why they're supposed to be doing it. They understand what the plan is. They understand what the contingencies were. They understand what the what the intent that you had was. They understand that the way that this fits strategically into the situation. They understand all those things. And if they understand all those things, then they're going to do the right thing. And if they don't, if they understand all those things and they still do something that, that doesn't make sense, well, maybe they do deserve to get yelled at. But again, I'll, the first person I check is myself mm. and say, well, I obviously had to make this clear enough. Mm. But think about this. You hurt your stamina. When yeah, you yeah. Your strength. right. You and a when you yell, there. when I yell at you because something went wrong, and you're my subordinate. When I yell at you, I pay a little price for that too. Yeah, because it better be important, and I better really think about it because I didn't do anything to build our relationship in a positive manner by yelling at you, mm. right? Did, or really, you? I guess you improved your situation for a moment, right? Because you escaped, right. but yeah. now you're more tired. <clears throat> Just like if I yelled at you to do something and you did it because you. Real, you know, you were like, okay, well, fine. I don't want to get yelled at anymore, so I'm just going to do this yeah. thing that he told me to do. Uh, it's not. It's. Uh, I'm sure I'll think of this at a later time, but it's not about moving faster. Yeah. It's about moving more aggressively. Right? Yeah, it's, it's not faster. It's like being proactive and being aggressive, yeah. and and shutting down the situation before it before yeah. it even becomes the situation that you know it's going to hear over and over and over again in combat leadership philosophies like mm. doing something now is better than waiting doing something that's pretty good right now is infinitely better than doing something that's great in two days yeah yeah good plan <laughs> right. now better than a great it's plan like be aggressive make something happen yeah like that is so important can you overdo it yes you can can you make stupid decisions because you rushed yes you can yeah. is there a dichotomy in this absolutely <laughs> there is do you, that's there's a dichotomy in every part of it so yeah. and every 
type of leadership. There's a dichotomy in jujitsu, right? Mm -hmm. There's a dich because if I just rush to a situation, well, that might be the situation that you wanted me to rush right. to. The you gave me the open, and you're trying to run stuff that other people might have a better vision of what to do. Yeah. Like if I might be, if I'm only moving for the first time ever m on our moving team, and I come in, I'm like, hey, guess what? Hey, we're gonna start getting this heavy stuff. And you're like, hey, actually, that's not a good idea. We should do this. We should get this stuff in here in the truck first or whatever, right? Because yeah. you've been doing it longer. Mm. So even though it's gotta be your default mode, again, there's a dichotomy you can push it too far. Yeah. For me to come out and write a book about the real David Goggins, it was tough. It was tough, but that's the only way. If I wanna help people out, the only way I can cut to the surface is say, look guys, gals, whoever's reading this book, I am where I am now. You guys see this. And it would have been very easy to write a book about the hero, David Goggins, but the hero is not me. The hero is the person reading the book. But I had to tell him where I came from to give people hope that, wow, that's where he came from? He came from all these fucked up obstacles and now he's there? I want to give people that kind of hope. So that's why it was tough. Because to give people hope, I had to take myself to the sewer to show people, hey, I, I, I you know, I, I come from hell. I come from hell. And a lot of it I created, not just society. Yeah, society helped me out, but I created a lot of the hell that I had to go through. I made this picture out to be a lot worse than what it was. It was bad, but I made it out to be, you know, insurmountable. So yeah, we could be our worst enemy. Why is the truth so important? You know what, because first of all, it does set you free mentally and it gives you a starting point. You have to have the truth to have a starting point. So when you, like, if, if I'm lying to you about who I am or I'm lying to you about whatever, there's no starting point. There's a false reality. Right. You have to create the real reality. So that's what I call my accountability mirror in my book. That's the real reality. Where the fuck am I going to start from? So for me, I was lying to this, lying about that. So I had no starting point. Once you come face to face with who you are, you have a starting point. All right, I'm not real smart. I have no courage. I have no self-esteem. I have no nothing, nothing. That's my starting point. Now we can move from there. But if I tell myself I'm strong, I have courage, I'm smart, and all these are lies, you continuously push that starting point backwards. Right. So that starting point is the truth. The no fucking bullshit truth that only you can tell yourself. Especially nowadays in this society, we like to surround ourselves. It makes us feel so good. Those people who say it's okay.